All right. Uh, now, about how about net force uh, x here? You have the normal force. A x. Let's no, do the A x equation. Yeah, just the tension. And I'm going to say I'm going to use a dot here. So would this tension be positive or negative? Positive. Okay. And what should I write on the right hand side of this equation? A five. I'm just going to write a dot here for this acceleration, and should this be positive or negative? Positive. So here's now where I'm putting in the sign. Now I'm just using a variable for the magnitude. If I'm only putting in the magnitude, it's my job to put in the correct sign. Well, this is two, um, two unknowns, so there's not much I can do with this at this point. A lot of students would get to this point and they would give up. They would say, what can I do? I got one equation and two unknowns. Well, if you get stuck, use a different Newton's second law. This is a very important principle. If you get stuck, crank out another Newton's second law until you have as many equations as unknowns. All right, so here's our other Newton's second law. This one isn't going to help us. This just told us the normal force. So what should I write for net force B in the y component? T minus And I'm going to call the tension again. I'll put in the magnitude of this tension, so I'll put a positive sign in here. These have the same tension, and they happen to have the same sign as well. Same magnitude and direction. And what should I plug in on the right-hand side here? Seven. What should I plug in for the sign here? It's positive. Oh, it's moving down to the negative. How do we know this is going to move down? Common, Common sense. sense yes. right. Common sense tells us that this whole apparatus has to be moving down. There's no way that this thing on the table can drag this up. The if only there thing is could... enough friction, it could not move. Yeah, that's why we started with the no friction. That's right. Yeah. So if there were friction, it might be motionless. But one thing we know, but since there's no friction, it has to be moving down. OK. Uh, good. Now we can substitute. Uh, oh, so let me just point out again, this is the thing you have to highlight. This is the thing that most students leave out, thinking about this sign. Um, so the best thing to do here on these multiple object problems is use a symbol for the magnitude of the acceleration and put the sign in yourself. All right, and now we just have to do um, some algebra. This is already solved for the tension. So I can plug in 5A for the tension. Magnitude of the acceleration is 5.7. Yes. And then we can also figure out the tension by plugging that into over here. Out the acceleration, 5.7 meters per second squared in magnitude. The tension is 28.6. So to be a complete answer, you would say object A is accelerating to the right at 5.7 meters per second squared. Object B will be accelerating down at 5.7 meters per second squared. The rope has a tension of 28.6 newtons. If they'd asked you for the normal force, we could have gotten that from this equation. Uh, but for this problem, we could have just as well skipped this equation. All right, again, the main thing I'm just trying to show is that there really is a systematic method for this pro these types of problems. You're not just supposed to wing it for each problem. You use the Newton's second law as your framework and list all the individual forces on the left-hand side, and all the problems fall into that pattern. Make sense? Yes. All right, now we can do the
inclined plane that's at an angle of 40 degrees. There's a 3 kilogram object on the plane and a 30 kilogram object over here. Um, and now we are going to have friction. It's time to start introducing friction because that's a key concept in the course. Kinetic friction? Yes. And yeah, I'm just going to tell you in this problem that it will be moving. So I'm just going to say that it's going to be moving. That's not obvious, uh, but I'm just going to say that the object is going to be moving because this is our first friction problem. Okay, and then we want to again use the same techniques that we've used on the previous problems to analyze this, to find the acceleration and the tension. How many body diagrams for each? How many free body diagrams do we have? Two. Two. Forces on object A. Tension. And that is pointing upwards, right? Yeah. Upwards. The tension is always parallel to the rope. So the rope here is pointing up and to the right. So the tension force would be up and to the right. Remember that ropes can only pull, not push. Point at negative 29.4 down. It depends where you draw your axes. But. So probably. So looks like what we should do what you were suggesting. Um, now in this case, I think I'm going to choose up the plane as the positive direction because we know we're going to be moving up. Oftentimes the direction of motion is the simplest thing to choose. So let's choose this as our x component and this as our y. And then we can put in this sign negative 29.4 newtons. All right, so we've got the weight and the tension. And we need a normal force pointing this way. So the normal force is not pointing straight up, but it's pointing perpendicular to the plane. Good. Any other forces? This one, no. So I've got the normal force, the tension, well, and the friction. weight. Now there's friction. Yes. That's right. All right, now first of all, <clears throat> is there going to be kinetic friction here or static friction? Kinetic. And how do we know? Yeah, so you've already figured out if the object is not moving, or to this be more precise, if the object is not sliding across the surface, then you use static friction. And if the object is sliding across the surface, then you use kinetic friction. Kinetic means moving. I gave you a whole handout that kind of summarizes the key ideas for friction. But one key idea is if you are, so here we are sliding across the surface because we're told that we're going to move. So we're going to use kinetic friction. What direction will the kinetic friction be in here? Opposite from the tension, or from the thing that's pulling right. the object. It's not always opposite to the tension. It's always opposite to, well, the friction always acts to oppose sliding. So the direction of the friction should be whatever it takes to oppose that sliding. Uh, well, in this case, we're going to be sliding to the right. So I'll use lowercase f for friction. Lowercase f for friction, the friction has to be in this direction to oppose the sliding. So that's very important. If we don't get the direction right, we won't get the signs right. Okay, um, so there's the weight, and then what's touching this object? Well, what's touching the object is the rope and inclined plane. Notice how easy it would be to forget about the friction force, um, because the inclined plane here is exerting two different forces, a normal force and a friction force. So when you're in contact with the surface, there can be two forces, the normal force and the friction. Anytime you write down a normal force, you should ask if there's a friction force. Anytime you write down a normal force, ask if there's a friction force. Uh, okay, um, well, let's, uh, let's finish working on that. Let's do this uh, diagram for a second. What goes into this diagram? Um, 294, negative eight. And? T going up. Anything else? No. No, because there's nothing else that's touching this object. So there's just the tension and negative 294. 